Right. If you don't have normal people that aren't benefiting, overseeing, you get embarrassed. I would not call the baseline voting because if you're just getting flyers in the mail of people lying to you and stuff like that, see, that's back to the marketing thing. Right. And, and we're not voting on what TV show am I going to watch tonight. Hello everyone, I am Melanie Youngsmo with the Lansing Journal, and this week I am here with Dr. Felicity Joy Solomon. And I think this is going to be an interesting conversation. We are excited about it. It's another chance for our community to be informed and connected. And uh, we are going to talk politics. We today. are. Don't turn off your... <laughs> this, is, this is going to be okay. This is not going to be what you're used to. This is going to be a helpful conversation about our community. I believe so. I believe so. So, um, should I call you Dr. Joy? <laughs> or Felicity? You can call me Felicity, yeah. You have a lot of names because you have a lot of um, different experiences. I do. But you're a local girl, right? I am, I am. So, born in St. Peter, Minnesota, but by the age of two, we were already in Harvey, Illinois. Okay. So, that the, yeah, that was my hometown experience. Um, my mom uh, was an educator and sensitive to um, ratings of school districts. So I went to private school, um, Lutheran school in Homewood, actually. Oh. Um, and uh, that closed and then went to a couple other Lutheran schools. But in high school, went to Thorn Ridge. Okay. Mm-hmm. Felicity is actually a perfect person to talk about politics because you have some, I would say, um, extensive, more extensive than normal person experience in politics. Yeah, you know, um, I, you're thinking back, I, <laughs> I didn't really have a lot of um, local political experience or I wasn't really going to meetings and various things like that. So now I do understand why people were looking at me the way they were when I just jumped in and wanted to run for Senate. <laughs> Start at the top, uh, okay. right? Yeah, I mean, you know, the top top is Congress. I wasn't like that, so I was just running for local Senate. But, um, yeah, I, I understand that more now, but I will say in doing that it is a crash course. You know, what I learned is that what, what we as the average citizen see and what we're kind of wanting to get, I think, you know, there's just a lot of buyer's remorse mm -hmm. happening. N not just from, you know, people not doing what they said they're going to do, but also just, again, in the system itself. Like, I don't think, the closer you get, it just doesn't seem to be what you thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, Joe Schmo citizen with some good ideas, willing to speak up and speak out, running for office, give me a go, let's see what happens. I mean, I think that's, you know, one of the ideas that we have. Yeah. Well, yeah, you could also, like, go into school thinking I might want to be in politics. Maybe you become a lawyer, or you do, you study politics, and then, it, so you might have people that are more prepped, I guess. So we have, these are the ideas that we might have. Right. And and what you come to find out is it's, it's a real, like, system set up as a club, um, if you can be if you can be marketable, then it looks like you'll be a good fit for this club, because hmm. you know we're kind of looking for people that care more about externals than internals. Hmm. And Is that true at the local level too? Do you think? I like think a very on a local, smaller you know, village and park I th board. And I think on a smaller board. level, it just, it just depends. Like it depends on who you have in charge. We've got a lot of people that are that are very uh, just cool. People want to see the system work the way it's supposed to work. It just appears to be a whole a, 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 a racket where they're trying to get people in that are like them. And once you get in, we're going to protect you. Like we're going to keep you in. And I, you know, as we talked about the local politics and things that are happening, I think as people are getting involved, they think that's what they feel like they're running up against with um, the Tiffany 
Henyard. Henyard situation and other things. The situation. I, the situation. So acknowledging this system and this club, is there any hope for little people in Lansing and Harvey and Dalton and, you know, why should we care enough? Yeah. I mean, I, there are ways that we can get involved. Uh, voting is one of the simplest ways that the average person can get involved, and people are discouraged, even discouraged enough to not even want to do that. Yeah. Um, running for office is a bigger step. Yeah. And we do need more options, I think. Definitely. But that's a huge step for discouraged communities. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you know, that's why I like to keep it real up front. And I don't really do well with elephants in rooms. So I just put it all out there on the table for y'all right there. It's bad, people. It's really bad. It's bad. I just want to like break down for you all where I feel like we're at and why I think you can be encouraged. Should people get out a pen and paper? <laughs> I think you'll just relate to it. <laughs> okay. I think you'll just relate to it. So if you have, imagine like, you know, you're in a home, you're in a family and you can tell something's wrong, or maybe at work or something like that, and you know something is wrong, but you don't know what that something is, and maybe it goes on for a while. So you're like half doubting yourself, but you're also not really trusting the situation because you can tell something is wrong. I think that is a good like diagnostic of why um, people have become disengaged. If, I mean, if you, you know, if you vote and you, you know, get friends together, you guys vote a certain way, you get your person in and they start making changes and that, why wouldn't people keep voting? Of course you would, right? Because it works. Because it works. If you keep doing something that's not working, it's not like we don't have other things to do. So, you know, you're feeling ignored, you're fe but you're keeping sold that this, this potential could happen. And you just get like, come right. on, right? So it gets harder and harder to believe that the solution that's offered voting is really a solution. Exactly, exactly. So again, like we go back to this situation where you're not sure, but then it finally comes out. This is what's going on. You get dude. a diagnosis. Yeah, you get a diagnosis, like something's wrong in your body and you don't know, right? The diagnosis is good. Something's wrong in the home, the guy's having an affair, whatever, whatever. It's like horrible, oh no, da da da. But you can do something now. So it's bad news, but it's good that you know it. Exactly. So that's, that's an important exactly. step to healing. Exactly. If enough of us see what's wrong, and you get people like that in there. Could we remove this protective covering? That's why I think conversations like term limits um, are important. Anything that says, I'm interested in removing the protective layer. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I want to show you that I'm not self-interested. Um, I had this discussion with a coach of mine right before I ran, and he talked about, um, I don't know if this is in like Latin American country, I don't remember where he said that this was done, but he knew of people that said, if I don't, it, it, these are my campaign promises, and if I don't do them, I, here's a contract I'm going to sign, and I'm, I'll give up my house or something. They put up collateral. Wow. I think we're at that point. Like, like you have to show that you're you trustworthy. Have to you show have to do something. You're Promises trustworthy. Are not no. And I think we can do that if we get enough of us um, in there, we can do some things to show that we're going to remove this protection that's here. Hmm that we're gonna talk about processes that allow you to stay involved. Or, or at least like say, okay, I've been uncovered that this is the process we currently have and this was the breakdown, but now we're going to do it this way. But we've gotta do some things that show that we're you know, willing to be vulnerable, that we're not gonna play with this whole club thing. 
from my experience, um, like right now I'm in a time of transition, right? But when I move, like when I plant a little bit, I'm getting involved locally. Mm -hmm. I will never not be involved again. Um, except like I said, for this little time of transition because I'm really focused on helping my parents with their house. But otherwise, like I will be involved somehow, precinct committee men, or if I just go to the meetings or whatever. You're talking about political involvement. Yes. Not just, I mean, there's community involvement, day-to-day -day stuff. Yeah. That's important too. But you're specifically talking about yes. some level of politics. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not voting without knowing. See, like when you run, the names, they become real people. <laughs> right. Like you meet them. And so and so is a jerk and so and so you know what I mean? Like, no, it's important to at least meet these people. Now, you know, you're running for office, you're friendly. I mean you should be most people are kinda good with people. I'm not saying you can't get snowed, but all I know after running, these are real people. Mm. They are not just names. So I gotta know them, like I gotta meet these people. You know, there's gonna be an election next year, 2025. We will have an opportunity to vote for supervisor of Thornton Township. Yeah, yeah. What questions should we be asking now? What research should we be doing? There's, there's just some wisdom in, in um, giving people respect, letting them show you who they are a little bit. So one thing I want to say, you know, I had a lot of people come to me, you know, because they're angry about something else. You know, you, Mr. Politician, how are you going to fix that? I don't think that's a workable strategy. <laughs> I mean, you know, I dealt with it well. I'm not saying, yeah, okay, you know, the politician, they might deal with that well or whatever. But um, it, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like... You don't want your children to lie to you, but how did you react the last time they told you something difficult? It, it invites lies when you freak out. So I'm just saying, are you giving people an opportunity to really show you who they are and what they believe by just respecting them, respecting what they say? Just let them, let them talk. Because when people feel comfortable, they get comfortable and then they can kind of let a mask down sometimes, hmm. you know? So putting people on this, like, perform for me, what are you gonna do? It's like, no, oh, come on. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not, now you're making them do the song and dance thing and hmm. you're making it a whole show like that. So then is it up to the voter to, are, are we relying on sort of a gut feeling when, we, when we're hearing people, when we're listening, we're receiving what they say? Yeah, I mean, and it's, it's probably more art than science, right? You can't. Yeah, yes, and but and the more that you can, even if you can attend one other precinct meeting, committee meeting or some political meeting, any other political meeting, and you end up meeting some like-minded mm -hmm. people. Um, if you're that concerned as a citizen and then someone else takes a, t a night off to come to something, they're that concerned, you know, what could you two do to promote a particular candidate? Then you're going to really get to know, you have to maybe really get to know them. Um, maybe, like, are they being financially accountable? Will they do that with you? Something like that. So it's like when you get in the mix, things can be done when you're, you know, at the table, when you're in the conversations. Um, if, if, you, if you're going to stay outside the glass, you're only going to have so much that you can know. Right. And, and just do your best as a concerned citizen. But if you have any more level of interest, I would just say the tide is turning. That's why I am determined to stay involved because the tide is turning. I don't know when the switch is going to flip, mm. but I believe, it's I believe it's coming. So I think we need to get in there with each other, form our little things, like the people who sponsored me to run. Man, I made some noise. So what more could we do, right, when we, when we put our heads together and, and go to a meeting, join with somebody else that has a similar <laughs> you know, concern and just see, see what can be done. So before election day, even just 
attending a village board meeting, attending a, a school board meeting, um, even if your, your candidate is not on the board at this time, getting a sense of what these meetings are about, yes. getting a sense of who the players are, what, yeah. the, what the items of business are that they're discussing, how they're interacting with people. Mm -hmm. Are they respectful? Are they engaged? That's, that's sort of a base level of becoming aware of the players in your town. Yeah, and knowing even what the game is. We don't want to have to pay attention to the system. We, we set this up and we want it to run and you know, let, let our elected officials take care of the business of running the town so that I can live my life. Yeah. As if my life is separate yeah. from the political system. Yeah, that, wa that was we aren't engaging with it and making sure, you know, tweaking it, maintaining it, yeah. it's not going to run itself or it's going to yeah. run in a different direction. I think that's a lie that we got sold on to be comfortable with being complacent. And we just want it to work. Y'all do your job. I do my job. No, I'm not saying you have to do the job of the village board president, but to have no involvement in what affects your city, what affects your children, what affects like your taxes and stuff. I mean, that doesn't make any sense not to have any. If your say so mattered, then you would want to say so. Maybe it's like um, owning a car. I'm, I don't exactly. want to. I don't want to. That's be a mechanic. I don't want to have to build a car. Exactly. But even just owning a car and having the benefits of a car means I have to know where the gas tank is. I have to put wiper fluid in. You know, that's there actually. There are some things I need to do. It's a brilliant illustration, actually, because, I, well, just when I think about, like, my 21-year-old having her first car, it's like you don't, like, if you're not particularly organized and very anal and on top of stuff, it's like you're all you're never doing your oil changes at the right time. You always are having tire blowouts because it's not a part of your right. consciousness to. So there is, you know, even it's if like, I don't want to do the oil change, I should be aware. But you have to have that. That it your, needs to be done. You have to put it you on the bring calendar. It somewhere. You have to take it seriously enough. You can't just stay at the shiny new. Yay! I have a car. <laughs> like that works for. Or, you know, however many months until you need that oil change. I think that's a very good illustration. We need to more have that kind of view because we don't say, oh, the car should just work. I don't want to do nothing. Well, right. you can't not do nothing and have the car continue to work. The car's so. not going to take care of you if you don't take care of the car. Boom. <laughs> No, it's, it's, it's very good because it's minimal, but it is involved, and you have to tweak your brain to get there when you're a new car owner. It doesn't right. just, because all the way before that, you just sat in the car and the thing right. ran. Mom and Dad took care of it. Mm -hmm. So that's why. We got to grow up as citizens. <laughs> what I learned, and the reason I will always be involved um, in, in the community that I plant in, is because I saw there's a role for everyone. Hmm. I believe there is a role and a calling politically for everyone. Hmm. And you might just be, you know, doing oil changes and changing tires regularly and stuff like that. Um, but I, I would encourage everyone to sit down and think about what is the appropriate level of maintenance um, that I need to do to keep my community on the right track. So what's right? the base level? So um, base level would just be, to me, one political meeting of some kind before you vote. Okay. And, and if you normally go voting and, don't, and haven't met 100% of the names on there, then make that like 70%. <laughs> Something, okay. make it doable. So that's how I do as a coach, right? You're not working out at all. Can we do five minutes a day? Can we do 10 minutes this week? What can we okay. do to say that there was a success in it, that you actually had movement that's measurable? Okay. So, you know, and so that would, again, I would not call the baseline voting because if you're just getting flyers in the mail of people lying to you and stuff like that, see, that's back to the marketing thing. Right. And, and we're not voting on what TV show am I gonna watch tonight. 
So that's not this enough. Is important. The stuff you get in the mail, that's not. You know, get out of the house, go to one of these things, or go if they still do Zoom, whatever, go to something. Because I really believe you go to one, you're gonna wanna go to more like, I didn't even know anything what that meant, right? <laughs> but then when you vote for someone whose name you know, and then you follow that, now you're a little more involved. Like, oh, this joker didn't blah, blah, blah. Or they did. That'll feel good. You know, just like begin to start make a path and track. I don't believe a one size fits all. I believe that, that we each do have a role. And I think that that would, uh, you know, if you're a teacher and you resonate with what I'm saying, teach it to your kids. Teach it to the kids in the classroom. You know what I believe? We all have a role politically. It's a new thought, right? Yeah. And the kids will grow up thinking, she says I have a role politically. And they might think about that instead of politics is just for politicians, i.e. just for slimy people. That's what it's become. No, no wonder. Right. No wonder we're in this, right? So I do think we need to look at it um, differently. And, and really make the correlation, the reason why we are being embarrassed right now is because we didn't attend. Mm. Anything you don't attend to is gonna grow into some monstrous thing, right? This is something that does require, obviously, a level of maintenance that I um, didn't realize. That, you know, like, we needed normal people that weren't benefiting to oversee what was happening. Right. If you don't have normal people that aren't benefiting, overseeing, you get embarrassed. I think it's important to make those correlations because otherwise if you're not doing anything, you're not gonna wanna. But if you don't want this happening again, like draw the, like my daughter just blew out a tire. She does not want to do that again, <laughs> right? So there you go. I like that, I think that's a, that's a reasonable thing to accomplish. Um, and the Lansing Journal publishes the agendas for all of our local meetings, not just village board, but library board, park board, school boards, all three school boards. Uh, so there are plenty of opportunities to get involved. Maybe you wanna try one each of all those different village meetings, uh, those different opportunities. Maybe you want to pick one and go to a couple of meetings, but that's a. I like that you put that ahead of voting, because yeah. it is a good way to to meet the players, to hear the conversation. I actually want to affirm people in their choice. Some of these people's choice not to vote. You're right. It's not enough. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo is not going to help when we have a big problem. Hmm. So. I, I just want to affirm that your feeling was right. It is not enough. So. Let's raise but the But the bar. answer is not to do nothing. You already the see what is, doing nothing is right. doing. You already have that. So now we're talking about what if you want to play a part in making it better? Because I'm not going to encourage any victim thinking of, oh, we can't, blah, blah. I mean, that's not, I'm not even a part of that. <laughs> I like that. I am feeling encouraged. Yay. And I hope that you are too. Um, there are things we can do, community. And uh, thank you. I'm going to call you Dr. Joy because okay. you helped us diagnose hey, the problem. Hey, that sounds and, good. Uh, <laughs> no, it's been a pleasure. I really um, have enjoyed this. Haven't gotten to do this in a while. Chop it up on the political space. So thank you so much. Thank you, and thank you, readers and viewers, for staying informed and connected. Uh, we appreciate your readership and your viewership. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at one of the upcoming <laughs> meetings. That's right.